Go ahead, please. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's uh, this morning here in my time zone, but maybe it's uh, afternoon or evening, depending on where everybody is. <clears throat> so uh, thanks very much for having me today. Um, I'm excited to talk about Einstein Next Best Action. And it's very hard to say. It's kind of a tongue twister. So a lot of people call it NBA. So NBA also means like National Basketball Association. So I'm calling this Einstein Next Best Action, the other NBA. And that's kind of a little bit of a joke there. Um, I really have been wanting to learn about this feature, delve into it for quite some time. So this gave me a good chance to find out a lot of these details that you don't really get like in the marketing presentations like we see at Dreamforce, things like that. So kind of look at it maybe from a, even a developer's perspective. Um, so we have a hashtag Salesforce Apex Hours if you want to share anything today on social media, uh, something on Twitter, questions, comments, things like that. So, Amit, uh, I'm sure if you're on this uh, webinar, you already know him, you've probably been here before. Do you want to say a few words about yourself? Yeah, hi guys. My name is Amit Chaudhary, and I'm an active blogger on amitsalesforce.blogspot.in, and I'm also an organizer of the Parliamentary Salesforce Developer Group and the founder of the ApexR. So, let me hand over to uh, Daniel. Okay, thank you. And a little bit about myself. I'm a Salesforce MVP, 25 Salesforce certifications. So I don't know, maybe the most certified in the world, somewhere up there. Um, I've got everything except CTA, so I need to crack that one still. Um, I have a new role that I started late last year as Salesforce practice lead at Robots and Pencils. So that's going very well. Uh, also, I help run the Bay Area Salesforce Developer Group. I've been doing that for a few years. We're approximately second largest developer group in the world. Bangalore is definitely the biggest. And you can find me on Twitter at Daniel J. Peter. So the first thing I want to say is kind of a bold statement. Uh, Einstein next best action is not AI. And a lot of these demos that I've seen, I didn't really pay close enough attention, and it led me to believe Einstein NBA actually included AI, similar to like Einstein Discovery or something like this, but it really isn't AI by itself, uh, but it's still pretty incredible, and you'll see you can easily customize it to power it with AI, whether that's Einstein AI on the Salesforce platform or off of the platform, AI such as Watson or other things like this. So um, just keep in mind that, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's got the Einstein name, but that doesn't mean that it sort of comes out of the box enabled with AI. So what is it? Well, part of this whole process for me was trying to wrap my brain around what this is. So here's a kind of a few definitions of my takeaways from what it is. I think these help to explain it, but you're probably going to need multiple mental models to fully understand what this is. So I can talk about it, but you'll probably also need to play with it to really understand what it is. But some ways you could describe it. Uh, it's a declarative rules-based recommendation engine with a UI that you can take action on. So declarative and rules-based, right? That's not AI. That's like you're going in and configuring sort of workflow type rules. Um, and then it gives you this UI you can take action on. So it's not just producing the recommendations. It's letting you take the next step to do something with. And so it's giving you that framework to put actions on the recommendations. I think also a big, um, a lot of the power of, of NBA is it surfaces the right recommendation at the right time. So you can look at many sources of data, uh, say it's on a case or an opportunity or a contact record, um, to, to look at what stage that record's in. You can look at uh, external variables, you know, any web service you wanna hit to get prices of different things. You can also look at all the history. Um, you know, you can run APIs. So I think uh, this, this idea that it's like a central point 
where you can query all these multiple sources, whether they're just simple fields on the records or whether it's querying a predictive model with some AI results, but then have that uh, all unified into one central place to decide the next best action. So this is like even possibly uh, stitching multiple recommendations together into a unified list. So just think of that, keep that point in your mind that some of the value of this is almost like an integration hub for all these things. Um, also, one thing it does is it tracks the, recommend, the reactions to the recommendations. Um, so there's actually a data model you can query that says people accepted it or they declined it. And so you can use that data to make the engine smarter. And I think there's some new terminology here. So I think that's one of the confusing things about learning NBA or some of these new terms. Uh, strategy builder. So this is a whole new uh, tool they give you, which is very similar to Lightning Flow Builder. And this is a UI for managing the overall loading, filtering, and branching logics of, of your recommendations. And there's the recommendations themselves. Uh, so this is a new standard object in Salesforce, and this lets you configure different potential recommendations you might want to show, uh, say, to a customer or even to a rep. And these can be anything. These can be products, services, um, even sort of uh, internal processes you could configure as recommendations. Uh, then there's the action strategies, or some people calling them just strategies. So I think there's a little confusion on terminology here. But the easy way to think about it is like strategy builder lets you build out and maintain these action strategies or strategies. And what the strategies do is they determine what recommendations you show. Pretty simple at the end of the day what they're doing. Um, and screen flow, right, this is a type of, um, <laughs> you know, this terminology here is very confusing. I know we have people call these things like flows, process builders, lightning flows, all these things. But basically screen flow, um, this is an existing technology. Um, you know, we have lightning flow builder now and you can have a flow that's not headless. You know, it's a screen flow. And these flows are just like you've always built them, but now we're using them for a new purpose. Uh, we're using them to invoke them from a recommendation. So strategy builder, recommendations, strategies or action strategies, screen flows. These are kind of the key building blocks. Uh, next best action. All right. So um, with a little background, I want to get into a demo now. So um, first, uh, I want to show you <clears throat> the recommendations. So if you go into Object Manager, you'll see uh, new custom, uh, new standard object recommendation, right? So this comes out of the box um, with a lot of standard fields, but uh, it's actually recommended that you add something like category, or you can add multiple categories, maybe a hierarchy. And this might look a lot like your product catalog. This lets you group recommendations into certain categories, which you'll see later why that's important. So I've configured food, beer and water into this pick list. And you can go into, say, the sales app. And let's pull up some of these recommendations. So what do these look like? Well, you've got a name, description, the category custom pick list we added. You can give it an image. And when we surface these recommendations, uh, there'll be buttons to accept or reject. So these will be the labels on the buttons. And then uh, this is pretty cool. This is actually a pick list, but it's populated with all of your actions. So these are those screen flows that we talked about. Um, so one very cool thing, I'll touch on this later, but uh, these are standard objects. You can populate these programmatically if you want. So maybe you could sync this from your product catalog if your recommendations were as simple as that. So, um, you know, this is an example of a recommendation. And then, you know, you're probably familiar with flows, but we'll show that flow. This is not a, a next best action thing specifically. 
this has existed. I, although the lightning version of this is new with the new spring release. You know, we're doing something very simple here. Um, so when we invoke this screen flow, we just give a simple confirmation screen saying, you know, are you sure you want to recommend this water <laughs> to the customer? And then we create a comment, uh, which is a record that will be attached, you'll see in this case, to a case. And it just records the fact that we, we did this, uh, this action. So I think the most exciting new piece of this is are the strategies, the strategy builder. So you can search for two things here. You can search for strategy and it automatically resolves to next best action or you can search for next best action itself. And here is this food and drink strategy that I've built. So, you know, uh, what the purpose of this is doing is to load recommendations from any criteria, single criteria, multiple criteria, filter them down for what's relevant to the user, and then maybe order and merge and present these results uh, to the, say, customer, could be an internal person at your company. I think this is pretty powerful because you could have totally different recommendations showing up in the same list. So, you know, I'm loading some beer and water recommendations, but you could also put food, you could even put services in here. And you can, or, you can order them by some priority that you put on the recommendation list. And, um, you know, you're not like overwhelming the customer. You're giving them a few very important things that could be very different that are really very relevant to the customer. Uh, so simple configuration here to load these. And what I would think of these are, are like the potential universe of recommendations you might want to show. So this load beer uh, load step is um, just loading all the beer, right? This new category custom pick list if it contains beer. The other one is saying, uh, you know, we want to bring in to our potential set of recommendations recommendations or category equals water. And obviously, you can do, uh, you know, and or logic with multiple filters here. So these are the potential. Um, recommendations we want to look for. These are the actual ones we surface, and this is really where this thing gets very cool and very smart. Um, you can do a lot, a lot of things here. So in this filter, uh, when do we show the customer the beer recommendations? So um, you can put any formula you want in here. Um, we're looking directly at the case record subject to see if it contains the word beer or to see if it contains the word thirsty. But we're not gonna show them beer if the subject sentiment is, uh, I'm sorry, we're only gonna show it if it's not negative. So what this means is like, if somebody seems very like angry at us, uh, maybe they shouldn't be drinking. So <laughs> a little bit of a joke there. Um, where does this subject sentiment come from? Like this is where you can do some cool stuff, right? So we can look at fields right on the case, or we can call Invocable Apex to do real-time uh, uh, AI-type predictions. So in this manager, you can see we've configured a subject sentiment connection, and this is passing the records subject line into some Invocable Apex called Prediction Demo. Uh, so we can look at what that is. So prediction demo uh, is basically just a wrapper here. It's calling, um, it's calling sentiment analysis dot get sentiment. And uh, I think this is, you know, when I talked about how this thing is not AI, it just uh, is kind of a framework that lets you invoke multiple AI models or even just rules based things. So in this case, I'm calling deepai.org's sentiment analysis. And I'm just passing in the subject of the case and parsing out that sentiment with one line of code. And so this API returns positive, negative, or neutral. Um, the same way I'm calling deepai.org, you could call 
uh, Einstein sentiment analysis, uh, Einstein intent. So you could categorize or classify these requests, maybe <clears throat> train a model to recognize if something is a service or sales, or if it's what type of product it is, if it's a sales, that type of thing. Um, so you can call any external services for AI predictions or even for non-AI just to get data about what's going on in the outside world at the current time. Um, also, um, you don't even have to call APIs if you want to use Prediction Builder, right? You can put predicted fields right on the record and look at those instead. So that's what that's doing. Um, so we're doing a combination of looking at fields just for simple contains this word or not while doing kind of an and uh, clause with um, this, uh, recommendation engine, prediction engine. So this, um, this is where we want to recommend water. So if they say uh, they want beer and it's negative, or they're asking for water, or they're thirsty. So, right, potentially, if you ask in the right way, you can get beer and water. If you ask in the right way, <laughs> or in some cases the wrong way, you could get just water, that kind of thing. And so ultimately it just surfaces this into a unified list of outputs of recommendations. And maybe just a quick um, browse at this um, strategy builder. If you need to change the name, you can do that here. Uh, this, this is the object where recommendations display. So you can create a strategy on any standard or custom object, pretty much anyone. You can also create multiple ones on the same object. And this is like a zoom feature. Pretty basic. Um, and um, this is kind of cool. So this uh, test you can invoke from here, from here. Um, this lets you test your action without having to go back to the record that it's on. You can see just a quick, quick and dirty test of the recommendation. It actually called that, you know, if we were to look at our logs, it actually called that web service to get the sentiment analysis. So this is like, as you're in here iterating on this thing, you can keep testing without having to swap to a new record. That's pretty nice. Also, one thing to point out is um, I would say this, this UI is not very forgiving for editing after the fact, moving things around. So probably a good, once you learn how these things work, you probably want to sketch this out first, <clears throat> maybe use Lucidchart or some drawing program and build it from this point backwards. Because if I were to want to change some of these, it deletes the things leading up to them, so that's a bit frustrating. So plan first and then build, it's much more efficient if you do that way. All right, so let's see this thing in action. So um, I'm going to go back to, actually I think I have it open here probably. Um, and uh, let's create a new case. So we have to give it some origin and give it a contact. I'm not gonna bother with an account right now. So next best action doesn't have any recommendations for us right now. Um, what, you know, if you remember back from our, our filtering rules is looking at the subject for something. So let's start to build this out. Let's say, um, Let's say I am thirsty and I want a beer. And unfortunately, when you save the record, it doesn't reload the recommendations. Oh, actually it does this time, first time. It won't reload subsequent times, but uh, so probably this thing has a negative sentiment analysis. Um, so if you say, put in some nice thing like, and I love you, maybe it will say, maybe it will now allow us to recommend a beer. Do you have to refresh? All right. And then, um, you know, if we do, uh, if we do something obviously negative, right? 
I hate you and I am thirsty. I think this one will uh, recommend just water. Or if we say like, I love you and I am thirsty and I would like beer and water. So you can play with this. So it's, it's kind of looking for these keywords, beer and water, and it's also doing sentiment analysis on your subject to see if you're like, you know, pissed off or happy, um, this kind of thing. Uh, so that's, you know, that's kind of how these interact. You can look at any fields um, or call a web service to decide which recommendations to display. And, you know, we saw in our recommendation records that we were configuring, uh, all this stuff is just pulled from those standard object records from the database. So this is all data-driven, um, not metadata. Some of this is in Strategy Builder as metadata, but this is all from data. And it gives you, um, you know, these ability to take actions. So we saw that very simple flow that we had, that screen flow. So if you say, I'd love a Corona. This means like, you know, maybe you're on the phone with somebody and they, they want it, or maybe even this is surfaced through a community and the customer is accepting this themselves, you know, and they order a drink. Um, that flow just wrote something into the case comments that said we ordered them a drink. You could make that do other things. One shortcoming of this is, um, the flow has the context of the case record or whatever record you're relating, uh, you're doing, running the strategy on. So you can read and write fields from the case. It doesn't have the context of the recommendation that you're in. I couldn't find any solution for this. Hopefully Salesforce will solve this, but there's no variable av available in flow for this that I could find. So essentially what that means is right now you're probably going to have to, if you, if you need to know something very specific about, what was recommended as part of performing your action, which I think usually you will, you'll actually have to make a different flow for each one. So then you'll know, you know, if you're on the Corona and you're on the Corona, except you already know what context you're in. Hopefully they solve that because you probably don't want to have to create a flow for every recommendation. Um, or maybe somebody on the line knows how to solve that. Uh, nobody seems to have solved this one yet that I can find. So I'm going to jump back to the slides for a minute here, and then we're going to go back to some more demos. So some tips uh, on this. Uh, one strategy per object, you know, just like triggers or workflows, you can do multiple strategies per object. But from what I can read in the documentation, the pricing model, if nothing else, will entice you to do one strategy per object. So you get 5,000 NBA strategy requests per month for free. So if you're running multiple strategies on the same object, you're going to burn these up more quickly. Um, also, this image size is kind of an issue. Um, you can see the, the bottles a bit chopped off. Um, so they recommended this sort of size or aspect ratio of 1,000 to 380. Maybe you want to try more like 480. I think probably the best thing, since all photos are going to be different, is you'll have to upload them to the recommendation record, see how they look in the UI, and maybe adjust them. Because uh, you don't get much control over the way this is cropped. And it's very cool the way they're displaying this in the card, but you have to get the image just the right size for it to display properly. So you may end up like, uh, you know, expanding the image and chopping the bottom off and then re-uploading it or something like that to make it look right. Look right. Also, uh, formulas in the strategy builder. Remember, we looked at this formula that was looking for some keywords and then also calling the invocable apex and getting the value of that. Well, there's no formula builder in strategy builder. There's just a text field. So like, you know, most of us, come from a background of writing these formulas on a formula field with this type of a formula builder 
with all your functions here, all your fields here, the ability to check the syntax to make sure you didn't get a typo. You can actually still do this. So I said maybe make what we call like a scratch formula field on the record, create your whole formula there, check it, and then copy this formula you know, don't save this formula field to the object because we're just using it as like a scratch builder. And then um, go into the strategy builder and paste it in here. And one small change, you just have to add this dollar sign record to the front of every field. It's just, that's the only difference in the syntax. Um, maybe eventually they'll put a formula builder in here. We won't have to do that anymore. But in the meantime, this is a more convenient way to write formulas with all the tools the formula builder gives us. And so this is kind of a you know, example of what that formula ends up looking like, this dollar sign record. Okay, so it's called Einstein, but how do you get the AI, right? So I think it's all about how you do your custom action strategies. Um, so you know, I have a couple points here and then sort of the combination of both at the end. Um, but you can create a connection to Invocable Apex in the Strategy Builder, which can call any prediction service, right? So this NBA itself is an AI, but it's like this hub where you can call AI. So uh, that Invocable Apex can call Einstein platform services, it can call Watson, anything you want. Um, also, you could run these predictions on any fields ahead of time and write the predicted fields into the record. And then you don't have to call Apex, you just reference the fields directly in the expression and strategy builder. So you can populate these with something like batch Apex, you could have a trigger that runs asynchronous update uh, Apex, like a queuable, uh, and puts those predicted values back in um, you could even have another service that sits on Heroku or AWS that's using the Salesforce APIs to update your predicted values back into Salesforce. Or you can just use this native declarative tool, Prediction Builder. It updates the predicted value, and then you reference that predicted value from uh, your strategy. But I think the key thing to point out here is this is a very powerful combination of human intelligence and AI if you want to run it that way. So you can maybe have some low-hanging fruit things that are easy to program into rules, right? Maybe there's certain attributes of a customer or your interaction with a customer that like pre-filter, like we don't want to even recommend anything to this customer. Um, so this is where the human intelligence comes in. The humans program these rules and that's, you know, basically the filters in your strategy builder. And you can also use AI. So you can combine these any way you want. Uh, you can run the AI first, you can run the rules first, you can run them in combination with each other with all these and or statements. So this is what kind of brings the intelligence, uh, human intelligence or AI. Uh, and so uh, it's not sort of Einstein AI out of the box, but that's how you make it. That's how you make it Einstein. So some issues, um, I touched on this already. Uh, when you launch a dynamic screen flow, uh, I want to say, when you attempt to launch a dynamic screen flow, you actually hit a snag, right? And that's the recommendation ID, and um, probably the best way to point this out is I'll go right in the screen flow and show you that. Um, let's say we want to have one screen flow that s figures out what uh, product or service you're recommending, and then uh, you know, could be 10 different, could be any number of products, and then dynamically pull that in and, and do some dynamic action. Right now, it's very difficult to do. So you end up writing more static screen flows, one flow per recommendation kind of thing. So hopefully somebody in the community or somebody in Salesforce can solve this. Um, and some technical info. I'm going to going to demos on this stuff because um, this is probably just too many words for one slide. Um, but these are things like, uh, you know, can you package this stuff? Uh, can you retrieve, deploy this stuff? Um, you know, what sort of APIs are available to access this stuff programmatically? These are the types of things that I'm really interested in. I think 
a lot of you folks will be interested in too, since you're developers. So I'm gonna pop back to a demo now. So first thing I wanna show you is this, this current snag that we've got, right? So I'm not sure how familiar, how much you've used flow sort of outside the context of uh, next best action. If you've used it a lot, you're a leg up on this already. Hopefully you have. You know, there's this flow URL. And so typically if you're launching a flow, uh, you can call that URL if you're building something custom with some custom query string parameters that you can then access, uh, you know, from within the flow. You know, so when you're looking at these variables, um, you know, you could pull those in. The problem is all we have access to is the record ID. You know, I tried just sort of trial and error, typing in things like recommendation ID. All we can get is the case ID in this context. Um, so when we're, uh, when we're on a case and we click this, it's launching the screen flow and we know what case we're related to, but we don't know what recommendation we just clicked on. There's no URL in this case launching this thing. It's all um, just being rendered within the lightning framework. So, you know, I tried sort of drilling into Chrome tools and trying to find some variables in there. Couldn't find anything. So this, that's that issue. Remains to be solved, but hopefully it'll be solved soon. For now, just creating multiple screen flows is an easy workaround. Okay, so on to some of these technical things. So metadata coverage report, right? This is pretty cool. Every time we introduce new features with a release, you know, we're on uh, 45.0. It's pretty cool to look at the new metadata types in here and see how well are they supported by, you know, metadata API, managed package, change sets, these types of things. So strategy builder, action strategies, you know, whatever you call that, uh, the, the metadata name formally for that is recommendation strategy. So we can see pretty light coverage. Um, you're not gonna be able to package this right now. Um, you can do some unlock packaging with no namespace, um, but it is, you know, it is there. We can look at it. You can click on this. If you want all the gory details, uh, what does that XML look like for a recommendation strategy? This is what it looks like. So uh, this will be a, a new uh, metadata XML uh, format to get familiarized with as you're, you know, pushing and pulling, retrieving and deploying, committing to version control. Uh, you know, we got our recommendation load nodes, uh, first match nodes, things like that. The other thing um, I wanna point out is there's actually a, uh, an API and it's under this, you know, chatter connect kind of API namespace where you can invoke these recommendations. You can look at people's reactions to them, things like this. So this is pretty cool for a couple of reasons. Um, so I would say one reason it's not cool is um, you can't query most of this data directly, you know, on the platform, like with SQL. Uh, so that's not so cool. But uh, the reason for that is <clears throat> twofold. One is that uh, when we're trying to get the recommendations for an object, that's not really stored anywhere. That's an API call. Uh, they only start storing these things if people are accepting or rejecting them. So for instance, when we click into this, we'll see it's only a post, right? It's not a get. So it's like an API you have to ask for the context record ID, how many results you want. 
and it will give you that back. Uh, if a customer comes in, loads 10 different records, and each one shows them 10 different recommendations, and they do no action, we presented them with like 100 things. Those 100 things aren't getting stored anywhere that we presented them. Those were just API calls that kind of go away after it's done. Um, but uh, you can call these APIs for different reasons. Um, one reason you might want to call them is you might want to rebuild that uh, Einstein Next Best Action UI. You might even want to rebuild it in a way that could track the things you've shown the people that they haven't clicked on because if you're showing people things and they're not clicking on them, that's kind of an implicit rejection of the item instead of an explicit clicking, I don't want this. And you know, users are very busy and passive these days, so you, you need to track these implicit things. Obviously it generates a lot of data, that's the downside. Um, also, to, to get, uh, to data mine your reactions, right? You can uh, look at those explicit things under the recommendation strategies and see what people clicked on. So just realize this is in the chatter API namespace. Uh, we'll take a look at this in Workbench. So you have to bump up to API 45. And some different things we can do, right? We saw that uh, this recommendation is just a standard object. And you know, we added some custom field to it called category. So that's pretty cool. Um, we can also look at uh, the API we were just looking at. So it's chatter API, right? Uh, what you can see here is we're, we're looking at a recommendation itself. So this is kind of like um, bridging the gap between stuff you can do a little bit with SQL and Apex and stuff you can only do with Chatter, right? Because this, this zero PR record, this is a recommendation. So this is showing, um, you know, data. You can, you can access this via the Chatter Connect API or REST API or via Apex. But then once you get into like these reactions, I guess since it's a higher volume object, uh, you know, that's why they don't store it in like a first class citizen. Yes. So I think this was working last night. I'm not sure why it's not working today. That's the, yeah, that's the other thing, right? It's kind of like a Easter egg almost when you, do the rest explore, you don't see that recommendation namespace, but if you uh, put, put these uh, in manually, yeah, should show up. Um, uh, then I guess we should uh, post it, right? We, we should uh, request a post. Okay. Yeah, I think actually what I did is I, I didn't want to show that one. I meant to show a different one. I'm sorry. Um, let's show this one. So this lets us browse. So this is the only way to access this data. Um, and basically this shows uh, for some recommendation strategy, uh, what, did the, what did the user do explicitly? So, you know, they can accept, they accepted the beer, they accepted the water, you know, or they, there's probably some rejection in here somewhere. I don't know if I rejected anything. Um, but this shows you, you know, this is interesting, right? Name it snapshot. So this is almost like click tracking data. Um, if we update, we could even delete the snapshot. Uh, I'm sorry, we could delete the strategy and it would still stay in the snapshot. We could change the name. 
you can see I changed the name from NBA demo to strategy, something like that. So this is like uh, low quality data. It's, you know, it's, it's high volume. You don't want to pay a lot of money for it. It's sort of just like, you know, something you would almost like stuff you'd store in Google analytics type data. I think you do some very cool things with it. Um, so next best action can access these things. Um, you know, when you're building out your strategy, you can say only show this to somebody X times or, you know, if they reject it, don't show it to them again. So the platform can do some workflow based on the results of this data. But um, I think there's a lot of potential for this data to make, you know, this could be the AI piece that ultimately Salesforce adds into next, next best action. So as this data builds up, they may want to um, access it at the platform level and then know what to recommend or not. For instance, if you're recommending all these things to some customer and they're rejecting them, the next customer that comes along, maybe there's attributes that make them very similar to the previous customer. You should be able to mine all those reactions from the previous customer to produce better recommendations. Right now, that's not available. But um, I think, you know, as developers, this is a big opportunity for us right now. So I'm going to move back to my slides. You know, so we've seen the marketing, we've seen uh, what Next Best Action can do kind of from an administrator point of view or end user point of view, but like, what can we do as developers with it right now? Um, so the one I was just talking about, um, I think querying the data on reactions and syncing to Salesforce or another database to report on and predict from, right? So that data is going to become very valuable. If you take all your, um, you know, whatever customer uh, case opportunity type data, store that along with, uh, you, you know, your, store that along with your reactions data. The combination of those two things are what can power you to build a really good prediction engine. So this could be an area if you want to take next best action to the next level right now before Salesforce does, um, feed all that data into a prediction engine and then have next best action query that prediction engine with invocable apex. Um, some other things you can do, right? The recommendations table. This is just data. This is a uh, standard object. So I think you do some really cool stuff with populating that dynamically. We saw that we manually created a water record, some beer records. Who wants to have to maintain that, right? So I think uh, Salesforce developers, we could create batch apex or a trigger that's doing things like going to your product object and inserting recommendations automatically. Maybe it's querying an external system. Maybe it's looking at products and services in your ERP and bringing those in as recommendations. The key there is to be category driven. So we created categories like uh, beer, water, and food, right? So maybe you have two level or three level categories, but um, you know, you'll be querying recommendations at the category level instead of the sort of the individual recommendation level. So that category can grow and shrink dynamically by writing some Apex or some API integration, you know, MuleSoft, anything like that to keep this recommendations table, uh, right? Like people want to be recommended things that are like new and hot and you don't want that to be a manual process to have to put those in every time you have a new offering. Um, also populating the fields on the parent object. So these uh, strategies can be related to any object. I showed you the case, but it could be even on an order object or anything like that. Um, but populating these fields is super powerful, right? Like you can have all types of intelligence going into the ultimate value that you write. So, um, you know, this could be, we've seen examples of things like credit scores, uh, sentiment, intent, um, you know, you can do image classification, you can do like a whole world of crazy things. And then you just simply populate a field on that case object or whatever object it is. And so now all that intelligence that went into defining that field value is now just easily accessible declaratively from, uh, 
you know, from the strategy builder filters. So I think as developers, we can come up with all kinds of cool ways just to set those field values that are AI powered via triggers, batch apex, API integrations. And, and then that really would empower like an admin or end user to just do the last level of value, which is having a strategy that executes on that value that we populate. And then obviously the invocable apex, we took a look at that in developer console. So these are for more real time uh, interactions. So these are sort of stored on the object itself. These ones are requested in real time. So I think this gives, breathes some new life into invocable apex. It's not just for, you know, flows, things like that, but we can also use this as our, uh, our handoff between the developer and the admin and our strategy builder. Uh, also, we mentioned this uh, rebuilding a custom next best action UI with the API. So we saw that we have that chatter connect, we can post to that thing, it'll return a list of recommendations, we can react to those. Um, so this, this would be a way to save the fact that you showed somebody something and they didn't click a reaction. So that's like an implicit reaction. I think there's a lot of power in storing these and there's no way to do that right now. So you have to build that custom. Another reason is maybe you just want a custom look and feel, right? Like the, the UI is pretty cool, but maybe it doesn't fit with the branding on your community or something like that. So you can, as a developer, you can make a custom NBA lightning component uh, that interacts with the API, but looks a custom way. Also, um, I think querying the data on reactions and syncing to Salesforce or another database to report on. So, um, I, you know, I don't know exactly, uh, probably the data storage is gonna be too much uh, to store on Salesforce. So uh, when I say syncing to Salesforce, mm, maybe syncing a roll-up summary or something like that. So maybe sync like the count of accepts and the count of rejects, uh, you might end up creating a junction object between the recommendation and uh, the case uh, that stores a count of how many times they were shown or accepted or rejected. Or, or if you wanna store that granular detail, you're probably gonna to wanna to store outside of Salesforce and another database, maybe on Heroku or Amazon that you can do your data mining on, have your prediction engines look at, you know, prediction.io or whatever your Watson, whatever your uh, model of choice you wanna train is. Um, so these are all cool things that developers can do right now to add value in the NBA space. So there's some documentation out there. These are pretty good. Um, there was some details missing, but this is enough to do everything that I just showed you. Uh, the Einstein Next Best Action docs, they get into all these things like strategy builder, uh, you know, screen flows, uh, strategy builder itself, just a quick tour of that. And then these uh, NBA expressions, you know, the dollar sign record dot syntax and all that. And then just the standard uh, Salesforce formula reference. So, thank you. That's all I have to show you, but I believe we have some time now for questions. Hi everyone, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question directly to the den. Uh, hey Daniel, this is Sean. Uh, so, uh, a small question. I have implemented Einstein chatbot. Mm -hmm. So is there any way I can integrate my chatbot with uh, NBA? Where I can utilize, uh, utilize NBA into my chatbot? Mm, that's a great question. I think, um, you know, I'm not super familiar with this, but some, some guesses I would say uh, chatbots, uh, uh, Einstein bot builder, if it can update fields on some related record, uh, such as case, then that could be like a common uh, sort of interface between these two things. Um, you know, maybe uh, chatbot, you, you show some recommendations in there, the user takes action on them and then it updates a field on the case. 
and then maybe when this case gets to the point where somebody's looking at it and it's doing uh, next best action, it would know the result of that chat and do some behavior differently based on the results of that chat. So I think that's one potential way. Do you have a way that you would envision the two working together other than just sort of knowing about the results of each other? Not now, but yeah, uh, we're looking for that. Yeah, this is, this is pretty new space. Like, you know, a lot of this stuff's not even packageable yet. So the ISVs are like kind of looking at it, but they don't have a lot of solutions there. Um, I think NLP is a good one. Uh, if you're storing chatbot uh, transcripts, you can look for the classifications and uh, sentiments on those. Um, yeah, I think, um, I, I think there's some potential even much deeper integrations. Uh, so like, you know, launching, I don't know if you could launch a chatbot as an action for a recommendation, like maybe, or within the, you know, either way, you could either launch a recommendation to a chat and say, you know, I want to order 10 of these, or you could have a chat that you're doing and, you know, you can say, hey, I want to buy some, uh, I don't know, rain boots. And then it looks at, you know, you're a, you're a man on your customer record and next best action says, okay, well, here's our recommended uh, rain boots for men and renders those results. I'm not sure how good the APIs are yet on Einstein bot builder to be able to do things like that, but that's the kind of stuff that would be cool to be able to do. Have you looked into bot builder? I believe it's not very API enabled, but I might be wrong there. Uh, yeah, Daniel. So I think I have got a few use cases where I can go with NBA into chatbot. Mm -hmm. Like I know the, the channel is a big problem, right? Like the, the chatbot channels are fairly limited. So yes. like being able to do like a custom channel or something would enable us to do a lot of these things, but definitely exciting use cases. Uh, yes. <laughs> there's a lot of people building this stuff outside of Salesforce for sure and seeing some very cool results. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you.